today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the Sideshow Collectibles R2-D2 Unpainted Prototype. This six scale figure release from the folks over at Sideshow Collectibles gives us the classic R2-D2 release six scale figure that they've already done but gives him a unpainted prototype design. It is currently available, and it's over on uh, Sideshow Collectibles website as we speak, and I think actually they've got a sale going on right now. Uh, the, the figure itself, when we get this opened up, the figure itself is, uh, I think it's $149. They've currently got a sale going on right now that's $120. So if you want to get your chance to grab this particular figure, it's about to put the link down below and you can head over to Sideshow Collectibles and pick this guy up today. For your box art, it's the same box art that we see with other six scale Star Wars, specifically Star Wars figure releases. You've got the primarily dark front with these side dark gray accents and you've got Star Wars R2-D2 unpainted prototype on the front. The back of the box features pretty much more of the same uh, down below www.sideshow.com. One nice touch also with the box art is at the very top there you've got a sketched uh, idea of the R2-D2 unit. Then what you can do is, as this being a sleeve box, you can slide up the top right there and you've got the open window featuring the R2 unit perfectly in display. Star Wars R2-D2 unpainted prototype six scale figure. Spot's gonna take himself a break and get this completely out of box. But when we come back though, we're getting a better look at the Sideshow exclusive, the Star Wars R2-D2 unpainted prototype. Here's more heading your way guys, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Accessories to come included with this convention exclusive R2, well, it's a little on the slim side. The only thing you're really getting is an instruction guide and a very small instruction guide, I might add, showing you how to change or turn on the R2-D2 unit and as well uh, the foot activation or how to activate the, the middle uh, third foot for R2. There's not really much else to be said for it as again, he doesn't really come with any other accessories. As Spot had mentioned, this is a uh, special convention exclusive, and uh, it is again still available on Sideshow's website. It's what essentially the original R2 six scale figure release, but it's presented here in an unpainted prototype monochromatic uh, silver finish. It's really nice though. I love the way how it, uh, of course, translates itself to, uh, to the more neutral coloring. Uh, gone are the additional blues and the whites, and instead replaced with a silver and black treatment. Of course, the, do the best justice for the prototype release of R2, we're probably going to want to compare him to the original released R2-D2. Standing next to him is the original R2-D2 6 scale figure, and you can kind of see how the two stack up side by side. I don't know why, but for some reason, the prototype R2 feels like it's a little bit heavier than the regular R2. A lot of this could be chalked up to the fact that the prototype R2 on your right still has batteries. In fact, when you get it out of the box, there's batteries already installed with R2-D2. This R2, on the other hand, I've already taken the batteries out. Generally, with battery-powered anything, I usually take the batteries out after I've reviewed it, and when I have it on display, then I don't have to run the risk that down the road, I could have any sort of corrosion, uh, corroding uh, acid coming out from the batteries or leaking potentially and damaging the, the circuitry and the, uh, the working components inside. So a lot of times I just take the batteries out, which again could chalk up to the differences in, in weight between the two R2-D2 units. Aside from the weight, which again, I think primarily it just sourcing back to the missing of the batteries. Other than that, they are the exact same figure. So on the left, you can see the, the more traditional colors of R2-D2 presented here in the white and the blue, and then you've got the silver dome, whereas a lot of the silver dome coloring is basically now just the primary color of the prototype on the right. Uh, d uh, again, basically all the blue coloring on this R2 has now been swapped out for the black. There's the side details. 
I do have to find, I do find though that the prototype uh, does seem a little on the loose side. Just a little bit on the loose side when it comes to the ankle areas. Uh, I might have to actually go in and see if I can tighten that up, up ever so slightly. And then on the back, I said primarily it's silver and black, but there are a few areas that show color. One more important area is the back here, which has the grid. This R2 hat, as you can see, the green, the red, and the, uh, the little yellow squares are still here on this R2 as well. Other than that though, everything on this R2 is exactly the same. Now, I, I mentioned it doesn't have much in the way of accessories, and that is true. The original R2-D2 from Sideshow had the Jabba's tray, if you remember. It also had a couple of additional arms. This one is slightly more bare bones. What it does have, however, is still the light-up feature, and what you're going to want to do is uh, the head spins. The head will continue to spin, so what you want to do is put your finger or your thumb right on this little disc area here. That holds the spinning end of the, the dome in place and allows you then to grab solely the head and pop it right off. You want to twist it to the side, pull it right off. You can see how it latches itself in. Pop it back down and it'll close it shut. But we'll just rest it right here. And there's already the battery obstruction little plastic bit. I've left it in just for the purpose of this review. We'll pull it out and then we can go ahead and switch it on. And it still has the shut off feature on the side. So you press it once, you have the, the white lights on the sides, the blue and the red transitioning color. Press it again, and you've got your little search light uh, lighting up in white. And pressing that again, shuts it off. To put it back in place, Simply just line this little groove, see this groove here, the smaller groove, line those up, and it's easy to see it from the front, line it up, drop it down into the slot, hold it, and then twist it back into place. And then the head will still be able to resume back in rotating. Including still the light up feature is a nice touch, because I mean they could have left the light up completely omitted from this, this release, but it's nice that they still went ahead and included it. Uh, I mentioned this also in the review initially of R2-D2, the on and off switch is also a nice touch where you don't have to pull the head off and turn it on and off every single time. You want lights to work. You can keep it on really all the time and just only activate it then by pressing the side switch. All the other components on this R2 still carry over all the additional uh, side doors are all carrying over from the original R2-D2. The only thing it doesn't have is it doesn't have the additional, uh, like for example, these little panels fold out. It doesn't have the tool, first of all, the magnet tool to pull these out. It doesn't have the additional claws that the R2-D2 initially had. A lot of those have been left off. These will flip out. Sometimes a little more difficult than others, but these will flip out. I don't have, let's see, actually, you know what? I've got my Got my knife here. See if I can actually flip these out. Very, very difficult. In fact, these ones are not as, these ones are a little bit more difficult than this R2, where it's still difficult, but I could at least get my finger in there a lot of the times and pull those out. This R2 is a little bit more on the finicky side. It wants to be a little bit more difficult, but these should be able to pull out as well. One other thing I've noticed that uh, Sideshow omitted from this release of R2-D2 is some of the additional panels. Some of the doors still open, yes, but it seems like they have removed some of the features. The side doors here still open up, but I can't find a way to actually get these out, and I feel like they have taken this hinge out completely. Something else, too, that they've also removed from this release of R2 is the additional panels on the top that could open up the R2 unit. Uh, for example, let me just put the, get it to stand there properly, bring in the other R2-D2 unit, and you remember like all of these components, this could slide open, and you had a little plug there that could attach, uh, I think there was the antenna that went there. A lot of these slid open as well and held the, there's the satellite dish uh, then you've also had the section that housed the lightsaber. Uh, all of those seem now removed 
from, unfortunately, this R2-D2 unit. So even though for the most part, let me just get this, this always, always is difficult to get this back in. I'll just put it to the side for a second. Uh, while it does seem as if uh, he was just a carbon copy of the other one with a slight change of paint, areas such as this, though, have been removed. Uh, one of the th things that was not removed, luckily, was the third additional uh, R2 wheel uh, leg, which, again, works the same way as the original R2-D2. What you're going to want to do is just push this in, and that locks it into place. Push it again, and it will unhinge itself, and then you can just simply pull the leg, move these legs back a little bit, there we go, and pull this leg completely out. And then you've got R2-D2 on the three legs rather than the two. This also helps a little bit on the stability because for one reason or another, these just seem really loose. That for display purposes, I might be more inclined to probably display them with the third wheel. A, it's one of my preferred choices for R2. I like R2 really with the third wheel always more so than just the two-legged version of R2. Uh, but it also will help with a lot of the stability issues that I'm having with this particular release. The convention exclusive R2-D2 is actually a really nice uh, addition to the pre-mentioned or earlier reviewed R2-D2 unit. The fact also that it comes in this monochromatic silver and black treatment ideally really lends itself to the fact that it could be a completely different droid altogether. Yes, it is missing some of the components, some of the additional panels that this R2 had, but it still kept the light feature, which is, think, I think, one thing that it really needed to have, as it just adds an extra little bit of oomph to the figure itself. Quantities on this guy, unfortunately, are a little bit more on the limited side. And again, even if you head over to Sideshow Collectibles, they limit one of these per purchase, per person, so, so to speak. Uh, he is also currently on sale. Uh, so if you guys are looking to pick up an R2-D2, maybe you didn't get a chance to pick up this guy before, or maybe you already have this guy like myself, and you want to get uh, a slightly different repaint of this guy, I really would recommend the unpainted prototype of R2-D2. He's really neat. He's really neat with the silver and the gold deco. Today's collectible spot, spot was already looking at this guy before, but this time around, we're having a look at the Sideshow Collectibles. This was the convention exclusive, unpainted, even though it technically was painted, but an unpainted prototype R2-D2. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more collectible spots heading your way. He is. Thanks for watching, as you always do. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.